Hello everyone! Welcome to Heart Center Tarot. As always, my name is Marina and I will be your guide for this portion of the journey. And today we're going to talk about tariffs for dummies. So, a lot of people have a misconception about exactly what a tariff is and how it works and, you know, why in some cases it might be a good thing, in other cases it's not such a good thing. So I kind of did some research today and I thought I would share with you what I learned, um, learned a little more about tariffs and um, kind of how they work and what they are. So I would ask you to please like, share and subscribe, obviously, to the channel. But share this video with people that you think either don't understand or don't fully understand how tariffs work. And let's get as many people educated on what it is um, as we possibly can. We're all going to do our part here. So one of the ways that I think I can describe a tariff is to put it in terms that most most everyone can kind of relate to. So if you've ever taken a trip outside of the country that you live in, Canada, the US, Mexico, Germany, wherever, you take a trip outside the country, you have a lovely holiday, it's fabulous, you do some shopping, you pick up some souvenirs, it's all great. When you go back to your home country, you need to fill out a customs and excise form. And one of the things that they will ask you is, what is the total value of the goods that you purchased outside of the country? In other words, what you buy, how much you pay for it. And I know most of you, well, each and every one of you, I'm sure, has been 100% honest on every single customs and excise form that you have ever filled out. I, yeah. Okay. So the government will allow you a certain amount that um, that they know you're going to be spending on, on souvenirs and, and different little things. But it's those larger ticket items that you purchased abroad that you could have purchased in your own country. The difference is that where you purchased it abroad, it was a lot cheaper. So the government wants you to pay a fee or a percentage of a fee for having purchased that outside of the country rather than in the country. And as long as you declare those things, there's no problem. Okay. Basically, what the government is charging you is a tariff on the goods that you purchased. Now, remember, you have a choice. You can buy that item in your own country, or you might be able to get it for a better price outside the country. No one is saying you can't buy it. <clears throat> They're just saying that, well, you know, had you bought those sunglasses here that are manufactured, um, you know, in, in the country where you normally live, you would have paid $300 and that would have contributed to the economy and, and keeping the businesses alive and so on. But you decided to buy those sunglasses for $100 someplace else um, in, in another country. So you contributed to their economy kind of at the expense of ours. So we're going to need you to pay a percentage of the value of the, uh, the goods that you purchased abroad. So that's a tariff. You can also think of a tariff as a tax. Now, um, tax is, it, it's a um, compulsory contribution that um, 
that you're making to the state or the federal government that is levied by the government, <coughs> excuse me, and it's taken off the workers' income, uh, business profits, and, and so on, um, or that it might be added to, to the cost of some goods and transactions. Okay. So that is, that's kind of the definition of a tax. So a tariff, even though some people say, well, it's a tax, it is, but really it kind of isn't. It, it's the, I wish that we could come up with a, a, a different um, definition of, of tariff, something that people could more easily relate to. Okay, so the idea of imposing a tariff on goods that are coming into your country from other countries is basically so that your country doesn't suffer. Um, the industries don't suffer as a result of items that are made cheaper somewhere else. Now, does that, are you getting the same, um, the exact same product? Well, in some cases, yes. In some cases, no. I mean, we are, we all know what it's like to buy that, you know, pack of a thousand batteries that cost a dollar versus, you know, buying 10 um, in your, in your local um, economy that costs $10. Well, you know how quickly you go through those. You know that by the time that all is said and done, that one dollar didn't wasn't really a savings. It just looked like a savings, but it wasn't. So <clears throat> a country will impose tariffs on items that are coming in from another country as a as a way to initially protect um its own economy that was kind of the reason behind the tariff was to 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 level the playing field so that everyone was kind of you know playing by the same rules making the same profit and so on and so forth well you know with any good idea that seems to serve a purpose at the time um the ramifications of some of those tariffs uh, didn't turn out to be quite so good. Um, it turned out that, you know, sometimes they backfire on you. You know, like if uh, I'm going to, I'm going to charge a tariff on, on the apples that, um, that my country receives from your country. And well, okay, initially you may not have a choice. You, you know, you, you pay the, the tariff. Um, but then after a while you think, well, wait a minute, that's, that's not fair. I, you know, I want to have a bigger profit. So um, we buy a lot of our pears from you. So we're going to put a tariff on pears. And then all of a sudden, you've got everyone in the game saying, well, no, I am I buy this from you or I, I sell this to you. So, you know, I'm going to raise a tariff here. I'm going to raise a tariff there. And, you know, kind of like who can outmaneuver and outdo each other when it comes to tariffs. For those people that, and for those countries that impose tariffs. Um, the gain initially might look appealing. Uh, it might look good. In the long run, it's not because the country that imposes the tariff finds that the, the supply of whatever it is that they're bringing in could be less and less, or there might be more players in the game. So now you have to think about, well, are you going to impose tariffs on the product itself? Or are you going to impose a tariff on the country that is sending things in? 
<clears throat> Let me grab a little sip of, sip of coffee to give me a little, a little more energy. And to collect my thoughts too. Okay. So, <clears throat> one of the things that um, a lot of politic politicians will talk about is we're going to put tariffs. We're going to charge a tariff on any items that come from this particular country. And we'll charge 10% of the value of whatever it is that they're sending us. Um, or we might charge 20% or more. Charging a large amount for a tariff in the case of Trump wanting to, he's going to charge China a 60% tariff on anything that they send to the U.S. That's not really protectionist. That's not really looking after the, the people in the U.S. and um, ensuring that the value of the, of the goods produced in the U.S. versus those coming in from abroad that they're the same. It's almost like a, like a punishment, right? The idea is telling people, well, you know, we're going to impose a tariff on China. So they're going to have to pay um, in order to send their, their goods to us. Absolutely. Yeah. China will pay that. What happens though is that that item that would come in from China, we we'll use China as an example, okay. Um, and let's say you've been, hmm, you like to go shopping at the, um, at the local convenience store. Uh, because they happen to have a, a brand of coffee that comes from another country that you particularly like. And up until now, you have been, you've been paying $2 for a, um, a package of coffee. And you're okay in paying $2 because it's a little cheaper than your local coffee um, manufacturer, which charges you $3 for, um, for either the same or similar quality coffee. Well, the government decides that they are going to impose a tariff, a tax on your brand of coffee that is coming from outside the country. And the country that is sending over the coffee says, Okay, no problem. Yeah, we'll, we'll pay the tariff. A little local store where you buy this needs to order more. So they now go to the country where they get the coffee from, and they say, we need to order an additional 24 packages of coffee for our customers. And the company in the other country says, absolutely, no problem. We'll get them out to you in the next day or two. And we'll, we'll email you the invoice. And the invoice comes in and the local store manager looks at it and says, no, there's a mistake here. No, 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 no. So they get back on the phone and they talk to the to, to the person that they usually buy the coffee from. And they say, well, yeah, what? What happened? There's a mistake here on the invoice. We used to pay, you know, I, I would buy this from you for $2 each. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're charging me $3. There's something wrong in the invoice. And the seller says, oh, no, 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 no. There's, there's no mistake. Is um, we have to pay a tariff. Um, and the tariff amount has been increased by your country. So now we have to charge you a little more because we're paying 
a little more? Well, you have a choice. You can either go with the new amount or you could say, well, you know, maybe I can source the coffee someplace else. So, you know, just for the time being, just cancel the order. Don't, don't worry about it. And you do your research and you look for other suppliers and so on. And you find that, no, the other, the other suppliers are, yeah, they're located in other countries as well. And, you know, they're, um, you might be able to get it for $2.50, but no one is selling it for $2 anymore. So your customers want the product. So what are you going to do? You're going to call the guy who says they can get it for you for $2.50. You're going to say, okay, send me 24 packages. And the next time that your customer comes in to buy that coffee, they're going to say, hey, I used to buy this for $3 a package. Now it's $3.50. What, what happened? Well, you know, price of goods has gone up and so on and so forth. So ultimately, has by imposing this tariff, has the country that imposed it punished the country where the coffee came uh, comes from? Or have they imposed a additional tax on the consumer, the guy who ends up buying the coffee. That's the product, okay? You might say that, well, it, you know, it all, it all works out. No, really it doesn't, because in order for your small little store to remain in business, um, they need to make a profit. They still need to be able to pay for their land taxes and their lights and their staff and everything else. And that's assuming that the price of everything around them remains the same. And we all know that that's not the case. The, the cost of, of electricity, water, um, internet, um, salaries, everything rises. So while we you might think that it's a good idea that, yes, absolutely, goods that are coming in from outside the country, we need to impose tariffs on them. Um, we need to, in a sense, punish them because they have something that, um, that we want and their product competes with the product that we have in, in our country. Ultimately, it's the consumer, it's the guy in the end that ends up paying more because everyone needs to have a little, little bit of a profit along the way. Most people don't get into business because they want to break even and barely survive. People get into business because they want to make a profit. Those that make a, <coughs> excuse me, a relatively um, you know, average um, a profit on whatever goods or service that they're offering, they're going to do okay. The guy who decides that, no, he needs to make uh, as much profit as he probably can on any one thing, well, you know, he might get a buyer here and there, but ultimately it's not sustainable because people won't pay the higher prices. So, when, when people say, well, no, no, yeah, Trump is putting America first. He's going to put tariffs on other countries so that they have to pay that tax. And that's going to bring in revenue um, into, into our government. Initially, for a short period of time, and I mean a short period of time, that may be the case, but then your country needs to, the, the, the business people in your community 
need to raise their prices so that they can um, compete with everyone else so that they are able to sustain whatever profit that they're making um, so that their business will continue to grow and so they're, that they can continue to be profitable. So yes, initially it sounds great. 60% we're going to charge China 60% on anything that they bring in or that they export into the US. Sounds good. I mean, imagine, just imagine how much money that is. My incense is almost done, you guys. So yeah, it's kind of wafting right towards me because, you know, why not? <laughs> if I turn this live stream off or if I turn this recording off right now, it would, it would go totally in the other direction. Okay. So where was I? So yes, a tariff is basically a a tax and it's something that we kind of you know keep keep passing down the line and it's the person sort of at the end of the line that ends up paying paying extra so that 60 percent tariff that you charge on goods coming in sake of argument might bring in a million dollars right off the bat um but as the cost gets filtered down to the guy who's ultimately paying that your your profit isn't a million dollars anymore maybe it's even a deficit because what would happen if um what would happen if that if China says, oh, okay, no problem. You want to charge us 60%? Okay. We're going to charge you 60% for anything that you export into China. All of a sudden, again, you have to collect that the the, the fees and the tariffs and the tax that china is now charging you you have to make that up somewhere where are you going to make that up you're going to charge more for your product so that reminds me of <clears throat> one of the things that um that came up within a day or so of of the election um and i think it was a post on TikTok. I'm not sure at this point, but anyway, the general gist of it was this woman had written in and said that, um, yeah, her husband works in a, um, in a large company and that they had to sit their workers down and let them know that they would not be getting their usual Christmas bonus. And the reason that they wouldn't be getting that Christmas bonus is because the company needs to buy as much product as they can before the tariffs on the other country take effect. Because they wanna be able to maintain not only their profit margin, but they wanna be able to have stock on hand so that they can continue to do what they're, what they're doing. And how so many of the, the, the employees were shocked. Like, what, did, what does that have to do with my Christmas bonus? You know, that's, that's the other country that, that, that's paying the tariff. Well, um, yeah, the other country's paying the tariff, but the company that you're working for needs to buy the stock now. And that means that they don't have the disposable income that they had a week or so ago where they could reliably forecast that, okay, going forward, um, this is what we are, what we anticipate spending for material and product next year. And we work that into our budget. And yes, we're going to have enough that we can contribute to everyone's Christmas bonus. Now your Christmas bonus is going to, um, 
to buy product to offset that future loss. So <clears throat> that is sort of a my explanation of a tariff. I hope that I haven't totally, absolutely confused you by this. I think the important thing to know is that um, tariffs don't work because tariffs punish the end user, not the, not the guy who is, or the country who is providing those services or those goods. They ultimately end up harming the, um, the end user, which is 99.9% .9 of the time, the consumer, which is you. So when you hear people say, oh, I had tariffs, yeah, then you know, China's going to pay. China pays the tariff. You know, we're, we're, we don't pay the tariff. Kind of like, yeah, Mexico is going to pay for the wall. How'd that work out? So not sure um, how things are going to roll going forward. But I wanted to at least give you a little more understanding of that. There is a lot of research out there that shows and explains why, <coughs> excuse me, tariffs don't work. Um, you can, uh, let me just very quickly, I'm going to, I'm going to point you into a couple different uh, locations. Um, there is um, Sina Glora, that's S-I-N-A-G-O-L-A-R-A, -A -A, is Assistant Professor of Supply Chain and Operational Management at Georgia State University, Robinson's College of Business. And he co-authored um, from Colorado State University, Arizona State University, and Kuwait University, um, a paper that discusses tariffs and why they are, why they don't work, why ultimately it is the consumer who bears the cost of any tariff that is put on. Okay, there, um, so yeah, you can go to the, um, yeah, Georgia State University Robinson College of Business and look up Sina Galora, and there is an article there. Um, and I'll just let you know one of the things that, that he says in, in this article um, is he acknowledges that levies can produce temporary benefits but asserts that the long-term impact on the global flow of products is often overlooked and regularly misunderstood. Rationale vary for the recent spate of tariffs and the study found from protecting intellectual property proactively to uh, responding in retaliatory uh, ways against rogue actors um, like different companies or countries like Russia and, and so on, particularly Russia since the, their invasion of the, the U Ukraine. Uh, <clears throat> and he goes on, while tariffs can provide some protection on certain industries, they can also create inefficiencies for the industries they were designed to protect, as well as for their supply chain partners. There is also um, one of the other things that, uh, da, da, da. Uh, da, da. just bear with me while I very quickly glance over this. Uh, da, da. The other one, come on. Um, the other one is an essay by Matthew Rooney, Managing Director of the Bush Institute of Economic Growth Initiative, Bush Institute. And he says, tariffs are great 
if you like rising prices, undermining jobs, and inhibiting innovation. So <clears throat> he says the U.S. is embarked on an experiment with protectionism in trade policy that represents a significant change from a policy approach we followed for nearly a century. Uh, we are told that global trade has destroyed American manufacturing and undermined our middle class. We are told that protection will restore America's prosperity and strength. Now, no, nothing could be further from the truth. Um, this is, yeah, protectionism and... Um, not exposing yourself to kind of the global things and it, it leaves everybody exposed. Um, let me see. Uh, the lesson that generations of Americans uh, leaders drew from that experience was that more open markets would produce greater wealth. Starting in the mid 1930s, the United States began to negotiate reciprocal tariff reducing agreements. After 1945, the United States used its unparalleled power to build a global system that reduced tariffs over time and began to create a level regulatory playing field. The result was the greatest increase in wealth in human history. Across the world, wealthy countries became wealthier and poorer countries saw their economies grow and, emer and the emergence of a middle class. Successive waves of innovation, jet aircraft, space travel, uh, micro uh, circuitry, cellular telephones, information technology, and so on. The wealthy countries, including the United States, produced growth job opportunities even as they lost segments of the manufacturing value chain to poorer countries. Before we climb off this merry-go-round, we should think carefully. We should be clear in our own minds that what we are trying to accomplish and make sure that we are pursuing policies that are likely to get us there. If our goal is to strengthen our middle class, we should understand tariffs and how they affect the middle class in the short, medium, and long term. So, tariffs really are barriers to, to the middle class. They impact the poorest first, and it just goes up from there. So um, let me see what else. Da, 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 da. OK, I want to make sure that I gave you that, yeah, um, essay by Matthew Rooney, Managing Director of the Bush Institute. So I'm, I'm going to try to put the links in the description of the video so that you know you can you can get in there and you can you know, look it up for for yourself. But there you go. That is where am I? What happened? Where am I? Okay, there I am. Woo <laughs> I thought I lost myself for a minute. So that gives you some explanation of tariffs. And don't be fooled into thinking that, well, tariffs are a good thing. You know, maybe right now for the next month, it might make you feel good, but eventually the people that are buying the product from the other country, the one that has been, um, who has to pay the tariff, when they restock, they'll do it at the higher prices. And who's going to pay for the fact that they have to pay higher prices? The consumer. It's you. So let's talk about the price of eggs. Alrighty. I think that I have bored you enough. If you do have any questions or any comments, please, please, Leave them down in the description of the um, or in the in the video. 
and share this with as many people as you think need a little bit of an education on carrots or at least need to have something that they can um, go to somewhere that they can look up things themselves read for themselves what it is and and realize that you're yeah doesn't sound so good all right i'm going to leave you with that know that i love each and every one of you and i'm so glad to have you here to have you as subscribers and to support the channel because you know i'm here to support each and every one of you all right take care and we'll chat soon